alert. The Ebon Hawk is adrift in space after a terrible battle. Most of its crew are dead or dying. You lie in the medical room in critical condition. You won't survive long without medical attention. The hyperdrive is damaged. Main power must be restored in order to bring the engines online and dock with the nearby Paragus mining station for much needed repairs. Your fate and that of the Ebon Hawk depend upon T3M4, a lone astromech droid. Return to this location at any time to skip the prologue. Press W A S. You have new quest. To view your quest, open this room contains a glass sealed cylinder and the communications console. You will come across many containers. Some is much like using the computer console in the cockpit. Note that some responses may influence how other characters react to you, so choose carefully. Furthermore, certain skills, powers, and attributes may modify what choices you have, or how successful you are with those choices. 3 CFD is malfunctioning. You can fix him by using a part. Luckily, you have already found one. If you repair 3CFD, he can join your party and assist you in repairing the ship. Success! You have fixed 3CFD. Now he will join your party. Droids will make for excellent target practice. Use the weapon. You can equip a
can stabilize your condition. Success, you are stabilized. To recover fully, you will require the medical facilities at the Paragus mining station. But you are not in any danger of dying from your wounds right now. This lift will take you to the outer hull of the Ebon Hawk. This is a workbench. With a work because of use the workbench to break down the items you've like yourself. To use a repair kit, click on the repair kit on the bottom of the screen or press 5. The store is sealed. This is the starboard dormitory. This blast door is magnetic. This is the garage. automatically with your approach recover you can use the explosive device in this missile to blow open the engine room door inside the starboard side of the Ebon Hawk. This open hatch has some parts that will be useful for getting main power restored. These exposed wires control the door to the starboard dormitory. 
The door is currently sealed, but you can override it from here. Success! The door is opened. You can now access the starboard dormitory through the garage. wires connect to the trigger mechanism. You can't open the outer garage door without depressurizing the rest of the Ebon Hawk. First, you will need to close the inner garage door. Do you want to do anything else here? jump to light speed until it is fully repaired and you do not have the needed equipment here on the Ebon Hawk. However, you should be able to rig the hyperdrive to restore primary power and bring the port engine online. This will allow you to dock with the Paragus mining station for full repairs. Success! The hyperdrive is online. Primary power is restored. Only one step remains.
Return to the galaxy map in the cockpit and travel to Paragus. to the Paragus mining station. To dock with Paragus, left click on the Paragus The sensors show the door to the storage compartment is being sliced. There is someone, or something, else alive on the Ebon Hawk. Examining the survivors of the damaged freighter. Looks like it goes by the name of the Ebon Hawk. Only one survivor, placed in the Coltal tank for recovery. The carbon scoring on the vessel suggests it was in a battle, but no indication of who fired on it. Couldn't get much from the Nava computer. I'm surprised the ship was able to make it inside the Paragus asteroid field without the asteroid drift charts. Aside from the lone survivor, we recovered an old woman. No life signs. There was also a protocol droid and a utility droid on board sent both down to maintenance while security sorts through the other items on the ship. It looks like the utility droid, a T3 unit, was able to get the ship working enough to get to the colony. We're prepared to- Could be a Jedi, but we won't know for sure until we get the transmission back from the Republic. If the survivor is a Jedi, that would account for the recovery rate. But I'm more concerned that a Jedi here may cause trouble. Some of the miners, especially Corta, are already st Another accident today. A detonation in the ventilation tunnels. If the lockdown measures hadn't activated, the whole facility would have been destroyed. Got most of the injured to the Colto tanks in time, but the rest had to go to the morgue. One of the wounded said a droid caused the accident, but we couldn't get any specifics. Miners about the Jedi. A number of the droids have been acting oddly, and not even memory wipes seem to be fixing the problem. There was a detonation in another one of the fuel vents the droids were working in. We deactivated several of them and moved them down to maintenance but we're still treating the plasma burns. That cuts us down to almost half shifts, and with the droids malfunctioning, we may not make the Telo shipment for this month. Fortunately, the detonation didn't cause a lockdown. Warning, there has been a fuel detonation in the mining tunnels. Emergency lockdown commencing. All personnel report to quarters and prepare for emergency venting countermeasures. No, if the ventilation systems are malfunctioning, evacuate the medical bay, everyone evacuate.
Find what you're looking for amongst the dead. Close to death. Yes, closer than I'd like. You have the smell of the Colto tank about you. How do you feel? Yes, I had hoped as much. I slept here too long and could not awaken. It may be I reached out unconsciously, and your mind must have been a willing one. Or perhaps you have been trained for such things. I am Kreia, and I am your rescuer, as you are mine. Tell me, do you recall what happened? Your ship was attacked. You were the only survivor. A result of your Jedi training, no doubt. Your stance, your walk, tells me you are a Jedi. Your walk is heavy. You carry something that weighs you down. I do not know. I was removed from the events of the world as I slept. A survey of the surroundings may provide the answers we seek. The ship we arrived in must still be in this place. We should recover it and leave. We were attacked once, and I fear our attackers will not give up the hunt so easily. Without transport, weapons, and information, they will find us easy prey indeed. Even as I slept, I felt much unrest here. I saw strange visions, minds colored with fear. Now, everything here feels terribly silent. I would find out as much as you can about this place quickly. I fear we will need to depart as suddenly as we arrived. You may wish to extend your search to some clothes, if only for proper first impressions. I do not know. Why did they spare you? Indeed, a Jedi trance could protect one from such poisons. In fact, the sedatives may have been intended to keep you unconscious for some time. It would prove lethal to those untrained in such techniques, however. Most curious. I leave you to the explorations of this place. Here, I will remain and attempt to center myself. Yes, what have you found? I am recovering. Your concern is noted, but not necessary. Keep your mind on the present. I sense trouble here.
Is this thing on? All right, all hands, especially you, Corner, listen up, because I'm not gonna say this again. The next one of you Juma heads to try and smuggle a blaster, or so help me, any sort of military-grade frag weapons into my facility is gonna take a long walk out the airlock. Why? Because in case you forgot, Paragian fuel explodes at high temperatures. That's what blasted that chunk out of Paragus II and created this asteroid field. So if I catch any of you with anything other than sonic charges or mining lasers, I'll burn you and your contract. Security out. And according to one of the miners, it was because one of the sonic charges went off prematurely. And like before, it was one set by a mining droid. The three idiots were grouped so close to the charge, it might as well have been a grenade going off. The blast turned their bones to dust. The blast wrecked the internal components of the droid that set the charge, though, so we can't even dissect it to see what happened. I don't like what's going on here. Ever since that Jedi showed up, things are getting worse. It's not just Korda and his miners, or the fights, but now the droids are acting crazy. If we don't find what's causing this, or who, this facility's gonna be space dust by the time the next Helos freighter arrives. So, you're in maintenance. Then maybe you can tell me what's going on with these droids. Sir, I don't know. It's like their behavior cores are undergoing binary decay, but I can't find the source. This shouldn't be happening. Well, that's reassuring. It isn't happening. So the next time we nearly have a breach in the ventilation tunnels, I could just close my eyes and pretend it's my imagination. You better give me some answers. I want to know the damage these droids can do if they start mining us instead of asteroid rock. Sir, these droids aren't combat models. Their mining lasers are weaker and less accurate than blasters. I doubt those droids could even hit one of us. Are you blind? What about the miners in Med Bay? It's sabotage, and it started right after the commander said we weren't going to sell the Jedi to the Exchange. So I want you to find out how these droids are being sabotaged. That'll tell me who's trying to clear a path to get that Jedi off the facility and stop him. In the meantime, make sure the security's armed with all the ion and sonic charges you can find. If those droids start coming after me, I'm going to need more than low-grade mining lasers to take them down. Clear? Yes, sir. Maintenance control out. Idiot. I installed an override switch to shut down any droids on this level, just in case someone locks me out of the administration console. As added insurance, I tied the override switch into the circuit to the holding cell door. It'll make sure it can only be opened if all droids in the level are shut down. I doubt Corda or any of his men have the skill to pull off something like this. But I'm not taking any chances while we're sitting in the middle of this asteroid minefield. Whoever's responsible won't be able to have the droids rescue him after I lock him up. Nothing will cut through that door. He'll be trapped. I secured the stealth field generator inside one of the footlockers in the security storage room. If I have the specs right, the interface field should be effective against the droid sensors. All I need to do is equip the belt and some skill with stealth in order to use it. As long as I don't get too close to the droids, they shouldn't detect me. If any more droids start malfunctioning, the belt should buy me enough time to get to the override switch I set up in the communications blister console. I'd rather shut them down than destroy them. I want to find out how these droids are being sabotaged, maybe even turn them against whoever's sabotaging them. Be careful. There is much energy in the room beyond, yet it stems from nothing that lives. Can you not sense them? Reach out. Cast aside your sight. Cast aside what you see, and instead 
reach out with your perceptions. Ah, you can feel them. The droids you cannot perceive, but the small oscillations of energy that you can feel echoing outwards. Ah, you hear it. It is faint, but it is there. It is the force you feel. It has not been so long as for you to forget. Do not turn away from it. Listen. Feel it echoing within you. Come. I shall guide you down the familiar paths. You will need it if we are to survive and escape this place. Beyond this door, someone yet lives. Be mindful. His thoughts are difficult to read. But you have nothing to fear from this one, and he might yet prove useful. Nice outfit. What, you miners change regulation uniform while I've been in here? Atten. Atten Rand. Excuse me if I don't shake hands. The field only causes mild electrical burns. Security claimed I violated some trumped-up regulation or another. Take it up with them if you want. But they stopped listening to me shortly before they stopped feeding me. Now that's criminal. Oh, you mean you didn't come here on purpose? I'm shocked. I really am. This slice of paradise is the Paragus Mining Facility the only supplier of shipping-grade engine fuel to this corner of the galaxy. Paragus Fuel plays havoc with engines, but it gets the job done. As long as you don't mind the toxic byproducts and trying to mine it without blowing yourself up. 
Yeah, this asteroid belt is one giant minefield. One proton torpedo, even a stray blaster shot, can start an explosion that'll make the one that shattered Paragus II look like a kid's pop detonator. You know the planet with the exposed core you saw flying in? That hole was caused by the first mining station that tried to siphon fuel off the planet. Blew a whole chunk out of the planet and set it drifting out here in a big clump of fuel-cooled asteroids. So the miners drill the asteroids now, not the planet's surface. That's why they don't allow blasters here. Can't trust a miner jumped up on Juma Juice not to fire one stray shot that'll turn the entire colony into a thermal detonator. You mean before or after that Jedi showed up? Either way, it's a real short story. You see, this Jedi shows up, and you know what that means. Where there's one Jedi, the Republic will soon be crawling up your ion engine in no time. But the story gets better. See, some of the miners get it into their ferrocrete skulls that since the Jedi's unconscious, they can collect the bounty the Exchange has posted for live Jedi. Well, what passes for the law here didn't like that idea. So the two groups started fighting. Then there was some big explosion, and then I was sitting here for a long time, waiting for some half-naked miner to show up and ask a bunch of questions. Don't know much about it. Maybe the Exchange wants one as a trophy, or somebody's got something against Jedi and is looking to collect. Not many Jedi left. Wouldn't surprise me if the bounty's pretty high. The Exchange is a big crime outfit, mostly operate out of Nar Shadda. Spice running, gun trafficking, slave trading. Now I guess they're posting bounties on Jedi. Like I said, I don't know too much about it. Could be something personal, or just business. Either way, there aren't many Jedi left to do anything about it. The ones that weren't killed in the Jedi Civil War ended up switching off the lightsabers long ago. Word is there's not even a Jedi Council anymore, but who knows. Yeah, Revan, Malak, and the Jedi that went to join them in the Mandalorian Wars. They turned against the other Jedi and had a scrap that almost laid waste to the galaxy. <laughs> Where have you been? Well, I wasn't there, but like all Sith, Revan and Malak turned on each other. After they turned on the Jedi, of course. Well, that was the story, but whatever happened there must not have lasted. Ah, oh, there was some big civil war on Korriban. Knocked that academy to the ground. Looks like Revan's Grand Crusade finally consumed her. Maybe you're right. Maybe I just hoped Revan was a woman. Look, no offense or anything, but your weird half-naked interrogation isn't my idea. Hey, wait a minute. You're that Jedi the miners were talking about. Where is everybody? From my beautiful view in this security cage? Look, I heard some explosions, some emergency alarms, some toxic gas pouring out of the vents. Maybe none of them survived whatever happened. And if they're all gone... Look, hey, let me out and I can help you. I can. I've gotten out of trouble countless times. This facility isn't a military installation, which means we may have a chance. You shut down the cell security field and I can reroute the emergency system so we can get to the hangars. We grab a ship and then we fly out of here. Huh? What are you talking about? So you done interrogating me or are we gonna work together and try to get out of this mess? Great. Now to business. Let's get to the command console. Alright, here we are. Now this console is set on automatic hail. You may have heard it when you came in. The asteroid drift charts are constantly being updated, so it sends out a transmission to incoming vessels so they don't get crushed into space dust. The hail warns them to keep their distance until orbital drift charts are transmitted and then provides docking instructions to incoming ships, usually freighters. Thing is, you can bounce that same transmission back to the comm here, and suddenly you've got access to the communication system from the inside. Pure pizzack. The console's ours. Now all we need to do is reactivate the turbo lifts, cancel the emergency lockdown, and- Hey!
This system's been severed from the main hub, after it was locked down from remote. You can't even reroute the system, it's been cut clean. No, someone tried to lock down this whole level tight, and leave us here. Trapped. I doubt it. All we have is communications back, for all the good trying to shout in a vacuum will do us. Be my guest. Not much else we can do. The comm's all yours. Tracked at the freighter in. Was lucky it wasn't destroyed when it drifted into the asteroid field. Not much on board. One damaged droid, one annoying protocol droid, and a lot of bodies. Sent the survivor to medical and the others to the morgue. Didn't recognize the ship's ID code, so we transmitted it to the Republic for some answers. Questioned the protocol droid about what happened. Says his master, the survivor, I guess, was on the Republic ship, the Harbinger, when it suffered an engine failure. He says the survivor was a passenger on the vessel and a Jedi. If so, that's gonna mean true. Inventoried the bodies and cargo. Everything matches the protocol droid's story. The T3 droid had seized up. So we left it in storage and standby mode. Don't know what code will access it. It could be its voice activated for all we know. We put the protocol droid to work in maintenance, sorting the mining droid comm routines and updating the recognition sensors. Man, to shut him up. When the survivor recovers, hopefully we can get him off this station before there's a re Trouble between the work shifts. Word of the Jedi leaked out and the miners aren't sure what to do with him. Corda's mining crew wanted us to collect the credits for the bounty the exchange has on Jedi, but I put a stop to that. We're contacting Telos to get the Republic records on the Jedi, but nobody will still know a word from the Republic. But I've sent out a broadcom transmission for records on this Ebon Hawk. One of the miners said it used to be a smuggling vessel. Accidents are making the miners restless. The droid behavior course must be undergoing some kind of binary decay. Two miners were drilled by a droid's mining laser, and those blasts in the ventilation tunnels nearly caused the whole facility to blow.
A lot of cargo from the Jedi's freighter is being stored in the secure cargo hold until we can pass it through the quarantine checks. And as requested, all the programming spikes the security officers wanted confiscated have been stored there as well to prevent further system compromises. The secure cargo hold should be safe enough. If anybody wants to break into it, they'd have to blow it open with explosives. Who ordered the mining droids to repair that Jedi's freighter? I come in here off the work shift and three of them are repairing the port stabilizers? Did I miss something? Is somebody planning a trip? Because orders were that the hangar was to be locked down ever since that Jedi arrived. I don't know what maintenance is up to, but you can't just commission droids for repairs, especially with half the work shifts in medbay. Those droids are needed to repair the ventilation tunnels before gas builds up to terminal levels. It's not like that ship can go anywhere anyway. Even if it had the asteroid orbital drift charts, the Nava computer's been voice locked. You'd need the access code to get it spaceworthy. Considering this latest droid commission breach, I'm putting the droids in this section under the control of the current dock officer. If anyone sends commands to the mining droids outside this terminal, I'll be forced to enact full override. Looks like those droids got the vessel working again, even with all the damage it had taken. The maintenance officer still won't admit ordering them to fix it, though. Regardless, still no luck accessing the Nava computer. It's been voice locked. Maybe by one of the corpses we found on the ship, like the old woman. If so, that ship isn't going anywhere, unless we rip out the Nava computer and put in a new one, if we even had one to spare. The only reason someone would lock their Nava computer is to hide their astrogation charts. Someone didn't want us to know where that ship was going, or where it had been. Only smugglers do that, or someone with something to hide. That Jedi's got a lot of questions to answer. Thank you. 
So is that stupid droid of yours gonna come through or not? Well, I'm beginning to think I was a little better off in my... Hey, what do you know? A little cargo cylinder came through. If he got the turbo lifts working, then we should have a clear run to the hangar. Wait, wait. Don't tell me you're taking that hatch down into the mining tunnels. Are you? That explosion I heard came from below. There's probably nothing down there except superheated rock and collapsed blast tunnels. You'd be an idiot to go down there. You're either really brave or really crazy. Or both. Alright, I'll try to monitor things from up here. And be careful. The only thing moving down there is likely to be mining droids, so don't be playing hero too hard. Uh, not that I care what happens to you or anything. I just don't want to be trying to get off this rock by myself. I'll keep the comm link open. I may be able to guide you through the tunnels from up here. Don't know if the signal will hold if you get too deep, though. 